Welcome everyone. Um, absolutely welcome our great speakers and Mary right here as well. Really great to have you. Thank you so much for having me. I'm excited for the conversation. Yeah. I think we many of us actually know about the Civil Share Project for so long now. It's really great to go a little bit deeper because you guys have done so much work for the last few years already that the entire industry, you guys have become leaders in so many other narratives. Uh, but to, to start with, let's talk about Mary herself here first. We'd love to know your journey uh, to Web2. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, I started uh, toying around with Bitcoin when I was in high school, uh, a couple miles away from here. Um, in 2012, uh, I started reading about Bitcoin on a forum called Reddit. Uh, and started just experimenting with like setting transactions, uh, uh, embracing the community online. Uh, but dropped it when I entered college. Um, and it wasn't until after college, uh, after my master's degree, that I started a role uh, on the fund of funds investing team at Galaxy Digital. So we were investing in crypto venture funds and hedge funds, um, and then reading about so many other projects. When I read about Celestia, uh, I felt so compelled to join the more technology-focused side of the industry instead of the more finance-focused side of the industry uh, to make the jump into a strategy role at Celestia. That's super exciting. To be now the head of business development in Solution is really a great jump from play around in high school of different ideas and investment to be really leading in the industry to something so fundamental. Uh, and it's not just any other college. It's Columbia and doing applied mathematics. So it seems that you have very solid understanding not just science and the background in technology, but also a very long-term view about what Web3 technology can do. Was that your uh, college uh, intention, starting from mathematics, to understand what Web3 technology can do? Um, to be honest, I wish I had a stronger foundation in mathematics. I should have done purely theoretical mathematics to be fully in crypto. Um, it's definitely an industry that keeps me learning and uh, reading uh, pretty much every single day. Um, I've really started embracing a number of like whiteboarding sessions. Um, online as well, so I, I don't think anyone's learning uh, journey is ever complete, um, especially in crypto. Uh, it's so cool, like seeing um, so many teams in crypto put out like so much um, cutting edge research uh, that it's incredibly hard to keep up with. Um, I had always envisioned myself uh, heading into policy, so I'm falling down the rabbit hole um, into. Crypto, like decentralized finance, um, open web technologies. Uh, it was an unexpected, but um, certainly much more fun than I would have had uh, in you know, the House of Reps. <laughs> That's absolutely very diverse training background. I would say applied, ma applied mathematics degree to be doing cryptography in the way that uh, with the UHM coding and all these uh, data availability proofs in Solution is just a great use of your degree. Um, I would also uh, have counted the number of work experience you have, have different with the internship at different firms to be such great training. Uh, I actually counted to be 12 of them on your LinkedIn. And it's so impressive that uh, you have been a scholar at Harvard, West Point, and Tsinghua, and all the way to different ventures and governments and labs. Um, how did you, is it such a Gen Z thing to be like just trying out that job? Well, I was born in 96, so I think I'm on the borderline for millennial versus Gen Z. Um, I can't take any of the credit for uh, building uh, an actual Celestia network that's entirely like my coworkers. Um, we have some phenomenal engineers, DK researchers, uh, protocol engineers on our team, um, and everyone's background is uh, ranging from, you know, like Nick, who was previously a co-founder of Harmony, uh, to um, Connor, who's one of our ZK researchers, uh, who was previously at Switchboard. Um, uh, these are all like the phenomenal people who uh, are building Celestia day by day. Um, I'm uh, more working on uh, like product direction, strategic partnerships, uh, our institutional integrations um, ahead of our mainnet launch. Uh, it's uh, like certainly like uh, interweaving all of everyone's um, uh, previous experiences and like educations uh, is how Celestia became what it is today. Absolutely. At the end of the day, business development is like the start of the ecosystem. And your experience is inside what you're doing with policy and education, whether teaching like women or girls or kids to be understanding programming. And now you're doing Hacker House. 
As a matter of fact, you will be having the career to to lead up the whole week of pet development experience. Yeah, that's correct. So if uh, anyone will be in um, Korea for Korea Blockchain Week or Token 2049, we'll have a series of hack houses, workshops, uh, developer-focused workshops, um, and then we'll have a series of conferences in Token 2049 uh, as well. Um, so yeah, <laughs> that's actually very interesting uh, to think about how like education relates to go-to-market and distribution. Uh, when I talk to folks that want to enter crypto, I always uh, try to uh, like associate their background to what might interest them most in crypto. Um, for folks in healthcare, uh, that might be you know like tokenizing patient data. So every patient um, owns like the uh, 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 everlasting like um, record of their entire data um, throughout like no matter what uh, healthcare institution. Um, so it's like, uh, like, what are you pre-existing interested in, um, and how does that relate to crypto? Like, how is that a on-ramp for you to um, uh, join the industry? Um, and then, likewise, for our strategic partnerships, it's uh, like, what value add can Celestia uh, benefit uh, the product or the project? Um, how does like making a rollup like um, how does Building on a rollup instead of uh, uh, a decentralized application on exist, a pre-existing smart contracts app uh, platform, how does that actually benefit the project? What net new innovation is enabled, um, or is it just you know an exercise in redundancy? Absolutely. Given your diverse bio and training and background, now to various such diverse use cases, a blockchain really makes sense. Um, and now we can jump straight to uh, many other fundamental technology solution. If not into the funding, sorry, um, our team were very excited when the first paper uh, starting uh, the story of Solution came out. In particular, the fraud proofs and the data release story of the peer review paper to now the uh, leading narrative of modular architecture. So can you lead us somewhere how what you get to know and seeing some of the founders in action, but many of the so, uh, uh, starting starting points of the project? Yeah, definitely. So the white paper was originally published uh, in May of 2019. So it's been a long journey um, to get to where we are now, which is weeks away from mainnet launch. Um, <laughs> yeah, so it's it's been uh, kind of a lesson for the entire industry in how do you create a new uh, paradigm shift in how you approach building infrastructure uh, for open finance, for open social. Um, uh, Dr. Al Bassam was the first one to uh, uh, pose the idea of decoupling uh, a singular blockchain function into its own entire blockchain. Um, and for the past three years, our engineers have been hard at work at researching and designing and implementing uh, those solutions. Um, and now it's, it's awesome to be able to carry that research and like deliver it to the market uh, and work in tandem with uh, a number of our strategic partnerships. Absolutely, bring the best research to production. The white paper may have came out in 2019, but many of us, especially the Harmony team, were, uh, were very excited when actually Vitalik and Dr. Al Basin, the founder of Celestia, came up with a paper even in 2018 where we were still going through drafts and reviews. In particular, the topic itself is fraud, uh, fraud and data availability proofs, and the full title is Maximizing Light Client Security and Scaling Blockchain with Dishonest uh, Majorities. That time, the concept of two-dimensional Eurasian encoding, the, at that time, really understanding where data play in the whole role of scalability was quite big. From what I know, it's also one of the first, if not the very few paper that Vitalik actually gone through the peer review as well. Um, did you read the whole paper? <laughs> <laughs> yes, many times, especially when I was uh, interviewing for Celestia. Uh, yeah, the paper absolutely introduced uh, a number of uh, new primitives. Uh, and one of the core primitives that our team focuses on is the implementation of data availability sampling. So instead of uh, downloading transaction by transaction, um, so Ethereum full nodes have to download every single transaction in the blockchain. Um, so it's piecemeal and sequential, and it's incredibly uh, uh, expensive um, and resource inefficient. Um, Celestia employs multiple rounds of random sampling of just the block header, so smaller chunks of block data. 
Uh, and uh, it's multiple rounds of random sampling to meet a confidence interval uh, that's predetermined. So that's much more scalable and much more efficient. Um, and it's the reason why uh, uh, we've been able to work with teams and see uh, like a 60 to 65% cost reduction in their gas costs. Uh, so with our uh, recent deployment of the Manta testnet, uh, so we work with uh, uh, the Manta team, which focuses on, on uh, ZK tooling. They launched a OP stack rollup with Celestia as data availability. And using that off-chain DA, but still settling to Ethereum, uh, proved to be a pretty powerful like economic value add. Absolutely amazing. And it's not just a fundamental technology or groundbreaking peer review papers. It's also the narrative as well. Finally, people understand it's not just about layer 2 or ZK, but the big concept of modular architecture. And you guys own it. Everyone know how to hashtag modular, you guys. But most of all, modular fellows, modular with different ecosystem. How did you guys come up with it? Yeah, that uh, is certainly attributed to our leadership team uh, to create a new uh, category alongside like a paradigm shift in infrastructure and underlying like blockchain architecture. Um, I, I think you know it's it's incredibly important when you're introducing a new topic to really uh, uh, reiterate that publicly, and that's what Celestia really mastered alongside you know the creation, uh, the research that went behind like what does it mean to actually implement uh, a new type of infrastructure solution. Incredible! Just love the whole concept of everyone understanding. There's so much more to understand the architecture level that is modular. It's not about the implementation, but the entire design philosophy. But you guys are also just as um, hustling and building and executing as a startup as well. As a matter of fact, to have the testnet incentivized way of uh, doing the Celestia block space race, to have 800 rollups participating over, over months. Tell us all the story there. Yeah, of course. So uh, our testnets have been live since December of last year, um, December of 2022. Uh, and then we just finished up our incentivized testnet, uh, which is the block space race. So our incredible DevRel team uh, managed uh, a number of uh, uh, partnerships on the validator side. Um, and those validators uh, uh, competed to support the network. Um, and then in addition, uh, our testnet was open, right? It's a, a public testnet for developers to build on. Um, and we saw a total of 800 rollups deployed uh, using our roll uh, rollkit SDK, um, which is an SDK for rollups. Uh, so that's a modification of the Cosmos SDK, um, the Cosmos SDK for proof of stake chains. Uh, so people can deploy rollups using the uh, uh, rollkit, uh, which is the SDK. Sorry, I know that's a lot of rolls in there. <laughs> Um, and then people can also send and write data to Celestia via the Node API. Um, so we had uh, more than 800 projects deploy on Celestia uh, as an effort to test out our product initially. Congrats on such a big, big milestone for our industry. Um, now that you have seen quite different ecosystem, but also doing develop business development with so many different industry partners, the leading ecosystem is obviously Ethereum, but many of our friends at Cosmo, Arbitrum also really taking a leading role as layer two, and you have come across and many of them are really friends at joint projects. How would you compare these three, Ethereum, Cosmo, and Arbitrum, from what you come across and some of the projects that you're into? Yeah, that's a great question. So, um, Celestia is unique in that we can work with really any pre-existing system. Uh, ecosystem, um, we can support any existing ecosystem and make them an even stronger uh, like value add to the projects that they support and uh, that build on them. So um, uh, while Celestia is a Cosmos SDK chain, we can support uh, any rollup um, and we're working with a number of alternative layer ones directly. Uh, so in kind of like that rollup segmentation, a number of alternative layer ones are looking at uh, launching their own um, internal RAS projects, um, so rollups as a service projects, so that they can work with customers to deploy um, their own blockchain, right? Like a blockchain that supports uh, a single project um, with their pre existing frameworks. Uh, so you can think of that in the same uh, uh, vein as our work with uh, um, the Optimism stack. So with OP stack, we were able to abstract away the data availability component so that 
anyone can deploy in OPStack rollup and post data to Celestia. And right now we're working with uh, a number of major layer ones and layer twos to do the same for their um, current rollup frameworks. Uh, so that news will be available publicly. Uh, the news on those partnerships will be available publicly um, in a couple of weeks, so please stay tuned. Uh, but that for us um, is exceptionally powerful in allowing uh, Celestia just to be used seamlessly uh, to eliminate as much developer friction as possible. So whether you want to launch um, uh, a ZK EVM chain or an Orbiter chain, you can do that all uh, on the existing like SDK frameworks uh, and then seamlessly post data to Celestia. Super exciting. And I was about to ask an exciting question when Mainnet? But you answered twice already, so I can't ask that. So <laughs> when in time, <laughs> um, to, to, to follow up that question, of course I know it's such a last mile of doing everything, of doing mainnet. It's really quite well so for any project to go through mainnet, tokens and token listing. But I'm also very curious on the role how Nick White, uh, our friends, um, really from Harmony to Celestia sort of leading, uh, uh, working with you, hopefully uh, alongside with so many leadership team uh, in the industry. How Nick White and Ganesha, also our friend now, at the senior research engineer at Celestia, how do you see the role and their leadership that, uh, that you, you, you work alongside? Yeah, they've both been phenomenal. Um, and they brought, you know, like their strong experience working on Harmony uh, to Celestia as well. Uh, and uh, that's what excites us most, um, is uh, we're able to unite everyone's experience uh, to support all blockchain projects that have been on market uh, already. So we're you know like eager, excited to work with new projects, um, uh, existing projects, uh, any project that wants to embrace uh, uh, new forms of on-chain innovation. Uh, those are the prime candidates we look for. We deal with them, <laughs> but we absolutely felt like that the whole industry move forward when there's so much stronger new project moving the entire use cases for sure that have been under infrastructure forward. And uh, at uh, Paris ECC, your founder, Mustafa, also talked about the end game of scalability and composability. In particular, he mentioned about such trade-offs that we have to make. Um, how do you see the end game and his narrative about uh, composability comes in? Yeah, so uh, that's what I think of as next generation architecture. Um, I think that a number of projects that require like high touch integrations, uh, where the entire team has to allocate resources and time, um, is uh, uh, like remnant of the past. Uh, things are becoming much more composable. Um, things need to be much more permissionlessly composable um, in order to like build a sustainable lasting traction in the future. Uh, because like this constraint on like resources um, in terms of like staff time uh, cost um, it's just not s sustainable uh, on like a team by team basis uh, so if I were to you know like wager a guess into the future um, certainly more teams like need to build organically uh, without uh, like a high degree of venture backing that's really great the last question, hopefully it's a little bit more open-ended and fun, is your opinion on crypto and the intersection with AI? Yeah, so that's been a big point of interest on our team. Uh, we've been approaching uh, that intersection uh, with a lot of caution, uh, what realistically and rationally can uh, be put on chain um, and in what timeline. Uh, so we're you know, hyper-focused on Celestia mainnet but we've been approached and are working with a number of teams that are exploring uh, uh, applications that tap into ZKML uh, or uh, projects that entirely, you know, like are looking to um, um, build like inference on chain, mm -hmm. right? So not hosting the model, not training the model on chain, but um, uh, I, uh, hosting like different parts and aspects of the pipeline. Uh, that are much more computationally efficient on chain. So we continue to explore um, that intersection, uh, but the entire team, you know, uh, uses ChatGPT. Everyone <laughs> uses GitHub Copilot. Yeah. Um, all those uh, uh, AI-driven like dev tooling from uh, traditional tech uh, that's more than tapped into on our team. Yeah, it's very exciting. It's so hard to be 
overwhelmed by all these new narratives. This is not what's going to work. For sure, all the other groundbreaking technology beyond Web3, I would say. We do know that we barely have Web3 even better than Web2 in terms of user experience. But I must claim that with the AI, with the generative models, we are almost approaching Web infinity. That will be the last game, the last engineer, <laughs> and I meant it, right? Whether we are still thinking about what Web3 can bring to humans and societies and communities, we do want to think about, are we stuck at Web3? Or do we need to come up with a new narrative of Web4? I actually think we would be very happy if we actually design all the incentives good enough for humans and communities and maybe the capture of culture and social. But then to think about what will be the agents and the models that come in. In particular, you mentioned about ZK and ML, but the new generated model will be a little bit more than what machine learning has been doing for years. In particular, generative agents, custom models that use large language models are quite different. So I'd love to see what is your favorite generated tools that you use every day now um, that, uh, that, 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 that actually help you. Yeah, definitely. Um, I mean, in terms of models, uh, I'm a big fan of uh, the segment anything model oh. that Meta put out. Uh, Meta has like a string of really incredible um, like open research. Uh, it's just it's like every week they release new paper. But segment anything uh, allows like cameras to just uh, categorize uh, different objects uh, really seamlessly. So there's a lot of exciting applications in you know like. Real world, right? Like uh, uh, with uh, like agriculture being able to determine like which fields need to, you know, like more efficiently like spreading resources to um, cater to X, Y, Z need. Um, so I, you know, like I play around with link chain um, in my free time, uh, but for the most part, like the most user friendly has certainly just been OpenAI. <laughs> yeah, very cool. But most of all, congratulations for all the milestones, and let's look forward to the. Thank you. Thank you. Maybe, maybe one or two questions from the audience uh, so that Mary don't just jump out and leave. Yeah. Go ahead then. Yeah, I'm aware that you guys support uh, multiple runtimes like Stability, Rust, and all the similar stuff. Yeah, so that's correct. Uh, you can deploy a rollup that posts data to Celestia and then launch any type of virtual machine uh, on that rollup. So whether you like to build in Rust, uh, you can, you know, uh, one of the projects we work with, they forked uh, C4, which is the one VM, um, and you can build in Rust on a slush rollup. I was just sort of curious, I mean, uh, how it's implemented on the blockchain level. Uh, could you deep dive a little bit into this stuff, or it will be way more complicated for the discussion? Yeah, so our docs are public uh, for a step-by-step -step guide. Um, and uh, uh, it, so, if you're familiar with Rollkit, uh, Rollkit preserves the Cosmos SDK at the application level, um, and then you can like you know, just deploy like any VM um, on uh, the, like a, a Cosmos SDK based wall, I guess. So it's handled by the cloud, right? I mean, most it. No, because Rollkit is like a drop-in placement for the sequencer mm -hmm. in Cosmos SDK. So that's you know like the the actual boosting of data. So yeah. you sort of just forking like uh, the infrastructure of this. Of yeah. The cosmos, I mean, for this need. Yeah. Sorry, a little bit Yeah, awkward. yeah, yeah, yeah. So like modification, right? Yeah. yeah. Okay, I got it. Thank you. Thank you. One more question. No. Go on. So first, in the time of response in Korea, our post where the instance strong blockchain infrastructure people who sort of matching that are potentially negative or are they still no. Uh in Korea if you can repeat the question yeah. Yeah Korea specifically. Oh like whether there's regulatory action? Um I I I mean I know like Doquan is on house arrest, but uh, <laughs> I otherwise I think the government is still pretty like experimental and exploratory with uh, new types of technologies. Again, thank you so much. Right. Well, actually, thank you. Wait, thank you. What can people do in the audience to help Celestia? <laughs> yeah. What can we do to help? Yeah, explore our docs. Uh, we're excited to welcome like every and all uh, developer. Uh, and I know there's a number of strong developers in this audience. Uh, so please reach out. Uh, happy to support like any team that's eager to build on Celestia. Yeah.
Uh, let's break the test net before the meeting. <laughs> <laughs>